Hi there, welcome. My name is Ryan and today in this video we're going to build this dust separator theme baffle that you see here in the picture. This is the second part of the build and the first part we built the bucket on the bottom, the dust collection bucket, and in this video we'll do the dust separator that sits on top. Here's a close-up of what we're going to end up with. Our inlet is sized for a 4 inch pipe and the top connection that goes into the motor there is going to be a 5 inch. The outside diameter is roughly 20 inches, which is based on the size of the rim of the bucket itself, which we'll use to base it off of. So let's get started with the build. The plywood I decided on was 3 quarter inch Baltic birch, and I started with an oversized panel that I used to trace the bucket lip on as a reference. Flipping it over was the easiest, and I just traced it out here and... Uh, use that as my base pattern. So my square here is 90 degrees so using that to reference off of I just trace the two corners and marked where I want to cut off the excess. I don't have a bandsaw or another tool to use for the pattern cutout other than a cheap jigsaw so that's what I'm gonna use. I stayed pretty well outside the lines for all of this and I'm just gonna clean it up after on the sander which we'll do next. So using my plain disc sander here I'm just sanding to my line around my entire base template here since filming this, I actually upgraded this tool to a rigid oscillating belt sander, which would have been much more useful in this case. Trying to sand it this way was just sort of tricky, I guess. It, it worked in the end, but it's uh, not easy to use. What I did here next was I cut a second piece out with the jigsaw as well and then clamped it to the first piece that I had already pre-sanded to the line and I'm going to follow it around and move the clamps a bit at a time. A better choice here would have been a flush trim router, but I didn't have one at the time. Or I had the router, just didn't have a flush trim bit. Now keeping both panels clamped together, I needed to find the center. I'm going to use this drill bit as my center guide and using a small piece of scrap I drilled a hole pretty much anywhere on the end of it then measured the radius and marked the radius approximately to the another point on the uh, scrap piece of wood here that I'll use as my drawing guide. So, using the drill bit in the first hole just to keep alignment and using a pencil, we're just going to mark a couple arcs from the outside edge with the approximate radius. It doesn't have to be exact because once we make a couple marks here, our intersecting spot or space right in the middle will be our exact center three or four lines or marks in the middle should be more than enough. I'll try and get a close up here of the center. It might be a little hard to see. I probably should have zoomed in a little bit. But basically with all your marks you'll have an intersecting point and that is your exact center. So what I decided to mark first was the inside diameter of the dust bucket. So this mark here is the reference to the bucket that it will sit on. So I know exactly where that outside edge is going to be. From here I need to determine where the, I guess, the Lexan Plexi panel will fit, which will be just on the outside edge of this, so probably about an eighth of an inch in. I want it as close to the edge as I can, and we'll probably just glue that in here. We will uh, use a router later to, I guess, make a groove around there. Marking here about an inch and a half or so width, and that's going to be the size of our port. 
This is going to be the approximately where the dust port will be. So here I marked approximately where I want the dust port to end. This whole section here is going to get cut out and we want that. So the end is going to be right before the inlet and we want the end or the beginning I guess to be about 240 degrees. So after we know that we have 180 plus, we're just adding 60 degrees from the other angle and that will give us our 240 which will be right about here. So here I'm just extending the line for the inside diameter of that port and we are going to cut out this whole section here be one of the last things we do on this piece we're first gonna route out the outside edge where the slots gonna be for the Lexan piece that's gonna go right on the outside edge of this here probably about an eighth of an inch in and we're gonna do that all the way around with a router jig or a circle cutting jig which we'll do next here here I'm starting my cut I'm just moving I'm just moving the router a little bit at a time and lowering it a little bit as I go. And then we're going to take a measurement and see how depth or how deep it is. The depth isn't critical here. It just has to be reasonable. I'm probably looking for about an eighth of an inch deep. Just enough to hold the Lexan in place is all we really need. So here I've got the bottom cut out that I finished off camera and all my support pieces pre-cut that we're just going to line up and see how everything is going to fit together. These are just going to be support pieces that will support the lid and bottom together with a reference point for the Lexan to go around the outside edge. This front panel is going to be screwed in that the dust port is going to be on. We will add that on later when we glue it up together, which we will you'll see up here next. You can see there on the lid that I finished the same cut pattern for our groove. And this is just a dry lineup of how everything is going to fit together. Here I had glued on the first set of all the support blocks overnight. Now taking our clamps off and then next we will do the, we'll finish this up with the Lexan and the lid and clamp it all together. Here just adding some regular old bathroom and kitchen silicone to the inside of the supports. I also ran a bead in the slot on the top and bottom of the panels where the Lexan will fit in. This stuff is pretty easily bendable stuff so I peeled off the outside protective layer and here I'm just going to line it up to the front and clamp it in place so it doesn't slide around on me then we'll get it fit into the rest of the slots so here I'm just making sure it's nice and tight in all the slots here we'll peel the inside layer off now it's starting to take some shape. We'll just leave this like that. It's not going to affect the rest of the glue up. Now the fun part is getting the lid on and the Lexan to fit into place in the slot on the lid at the same time. And before you do that, remember to put some glue on all the supports. I almost forgot about that, so we'll add that on quick here. I'm not actually going to be screwing the lid on. I'm just going to have everything held on by the glue. Okay, now that everything's ready to go, I've also got a bead of silicone on the lid inside that slot as well that I didn't show off camera. So here, we're just going to try and line it up at the beginning and get it all in place. And 
it actually fit in quite nicely. It just snapped into place, the Lexan fit into the groove, and that was it. Now we're just going to clamp everything down tight and we're going to let it dry overnight. You can see here how it's going to look. That front inlet piece is just loosely fit in there. It's actually not in, not glued in. We will screw that in place after. All right, and that was pretty much it. Here's a view of it upside down with the front inlet port screwed into place with our inlet hole. The top connection piece is siliconed in. That's going to connect up to the motor and everything was sanded down and given a couple coats of clear poly. That is all there is to it. Thanks for watching.